Welcome to another episode of Ask the Experts. I'm your co-host, Jeffrey Walk. And I'm Elizabeth Finlayson. We're from the networking group, TNG, which is Chicago's premier business networking group focused on helping members and making a difference in the communities we serve. Ask the Experts is an effort to share our knowledge with a wider audience. Welcome to another episode of Ask the Experts. Today's episode is discussing challenges many of us face with discovering our own identities and learning how the experience of portrait photography can change the way we see ourselves. Our guest today is Spider Mika Hemmons, artist, therapist, and photographer with Spider Mika Portraits in Chicago. Welcome, Spider. Thank you, Jeffrey. Wonderful to chat with you this morning. So before we jump in, I'm just curious to know more about your name and how that came out? (laughs) You know, it's usually people's first question, where does the spider come from? And and it's a good story, I think so, because it's true, all good stories are true, right? So I was a little, little bitty thing, five, six years old, and I was living in a neighborhood, I know this is gonna sound strange, but we actually used to know our neighbors, look at that. And I come from a large family. My mom and dad had six girls. So we were quite popular in the neighborhood. And oftentimes all the kids in the neighborhood would just kind of find and congregate at our home to play summer games and just hang out. And there was this one beautiful summer afternoon where it it had to be at least six or seven, maybe eight houses of all children where we were playing this giant game of hide and seek. And I had an idea and I was going to go hide in a certain place. And before I get there, there was a little shimmer in the sun catching my eye and I got completely distracted. So I go over and I see that it's a tiny strand of web and I get even closer and I see little legs dangling from an edge. And I was completely enthralled, forgot all about the game. People are coming, hey, Tag, you're it, I found you. And I'm like, leave me alone. I, I'm in a different world right now. So I sit my little tiny self in the grass and I watch this tiny little spider. It was no bigger than like a pin prick from, you know, a, a pin. I watched the spider build a web. It was only about this big when it got done, but it was fascinating. And that story and that experience stayed with me until the time I was 16. I was in college for a couple of weeks. I was 16 in college. And my very first professor that made an impact on me, we're sitting in class and he's talking about branding, which was really exciting to me. And something he said triggered this memory of the spider and it stuck. So at 16 years old in college, I created my logo, the the same one I'm using today, and the name Spider Mika. And when I started my business, fast forward, you know, many years later, I kept my spider name, I kept my logo and the image, because here's the ending to to your question, I felt like I'm tiny sometimes in this great big world. But yet, at the same time, I'm creating something beautiful, functional, that I want people to stop, pause, and appreciate like I did when I watched that spider weave its web. I can't think of a better way to answer that question. So that was fascinating to hear. And, you know, when I look at some of the portraits that you've done and some of the work, I have to believe there is a I'm going to use a little bit of analogy here, a thread of continuity in the way you approach your clients. And I think that there's a certain amount of the way that you capture some of their memories and who they are and bring that out in the work that you do. So there is that craftsmanship and that weaving meant, you know, perspective of how you do your work as well. It's interesting that, I mean, I love that you can see that. I appreciate it. I don't think that you would say it if, it if you didn't see it. And what I love about the spider sort of being my spirit creature right now is that so many things that spiders do and the way they operate and act naturally, I've actually noticed it come up a lot in the way that I work and run my business. It's, it's really just sort of fascinating. So, so I have to ask, <clears throat> is there any temptation to use any of the uh, 
<clears throat> Marvel, you know, <laughs> types of, uh, you know, imagery in there at all. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. Not that that would put you at peril. I'm just curious. All right. <laughs> so you know, we've spoken before and I've seen your portfolio on your website and the testimonials are from the heart. And it seems that some of your clients have had life changing experiences from the work that you've done. And I was wondering if you could maybe share a little bit more about the work you do and how you do it. Absolutely. The, I, I agree the testimonials that come in, it, it's, they're just far and beyond anything that I ever expect. And it, it does more than my heart good. It does my soul good to get these words and, and receive the things that my clients say about their experience and their portraits. The work that I do started because I was in an environment where I was kind of doing, I, I don't want to say the opposite work. It, it, it's not that at all, but I was in, I was in a situation where I saw with my own eyes firsthand, and I would even say I was sort of a perpetuator of this cultural poison that we're all suffering from right now and have been for a long time where we see magazines and important people and figures and things like that. And we look at them through this fog as if beauty itself is unattainable, as if we could never be as beautiful, as important as this person, this person, and this person. This person's got a million dollars and a team of people helping them eat and work out and sleep schedule and all these things. And because I don't have that, I'm not pretty. I'm not beautiful. I'm not worth it. I'm not enough. It's that language that went on and on and on and on. And for a long time, you know, people would say, oh, you know, my, my daughter's affected, my teenager's affected. There's peer pressure at school and the media and all these things, filters, blah, blah, blah. And I was there to see that it wasn't just the teenagers and the young generation, it was us and our grandmothers. And that story was continued to be played out again and again and again. And like I said, it, it's cultural poison, it was toxic. And I was part of that um, because I, I, I was an editor, I was a retoucher and I was asked to get rid of wrinkles and make gray hair black and make a person lose X number of pounds because this image that they came up and showed up with naturally to other people wasn't good enough. So I changed the narrative. I said that, sure, you know, I, I don't expect to change the entire world. It's a, it's a huge ask, but what I can do is with the camera as my tool, one person at a time who's going to look in the mirror and all of a sudden realize that they don't have to look like anyone else to be beautiful and, and feel successful and be important, that person is going to now teach her children or his children. And I can change that narrative in someone's home, in someone's mirror, one person at a time. So when you say you can see these stories of transformation on my site and in these testimonials, it's, it's like I said, it, it warms not just my heart, but it, it really is a, a soul joy because it's what I, it, it was my mission to transform minds and transform states of being. And that's exactly what happens in the, within the walls of my studio. It's a safe space. Uh, you called me a therapist earlier, and that's absolutely <laughs> what happens sometimes. I get told all the secrets. Think People tell me things through email and in person that they confess they've never told anyone else. And I appreciate that. I welcome that without advertising that somehow people know that this is a space where they can be them, themselves completely with me. And that is transformative. That is something that we don't always get to do on a day-to-day -day basis in our homes and our jobs with our family even. So I'm, I'm happy that that transformation happens. And if I'm, I, it's always an honor that I am there to witness and, and be a part of that. That's great. Um, and the word therapist is really uh, important on several levels. Um, I mean, I don't think people see themselves. 
And when they see a portrait, well, let's say that when they take a picture of themselves, they don't like it. Now, <laughs> that's because most of us don't know how to do photography. But in the hands of an artist, which is something also I used in describing you, then you can start to see how they can bring out the best qualities in a person, the same way a craftsman can take a piece of wood and turn it into something amazing and beautiful. And I think, you know, there, that is the artistry that comes out. And that's why photography done, you know, by an artist's hand is a skill that can lend itself in many different ways. And because it's a personification of somebody, and it's a different way for someone to see themselves, if it can improve their perspective and their understanding about their who they are and how they can be perceived, it's all, it, it can be life-changing. And I think that's, again, it can take years for a therapist to try to get there, but you can do that in the picture. That's pretty, that's pretty special. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm not going to claim that I can, you know, do what a therapist actually does, but it, it is pretty awesome. I, I cannot say that the transformation doesn't happen. I, I see it on a daily basis and you, you bring up such great points about being able to see yourself through someone else's lens. And I have a friend who says that almost all the time. She's like, if you could only see yourself through Mika's lens. And humanity is such a wonderful, beautiful, complex thing to me. It's always been my favorite topic. I love watching people. I love hearing stories about people's lives. And you're, you're right, Jeffrey, it's really difficult to see ourselves because of so many reasons. We don't, we don't even have time to get into all of it, but yes, we have a hard time seeing ourselves. So when I come in, I maintain that I try to see everyone in the best light. I, my tagline is actually beauty is what happens when we love who we are. And I say that proudly because it, I believe that beauty actually has nothing to do with our skin and our appearance and how much hair we have and what the color of our hair is and any of those things. Beauty is your spirit. And when it comes out, that's where we get the love and the connection and the seeing ourselves in our most authentic ways and not this personification of what we think we should be or what we're trying to be. It really is who you are right now and appreciating the breath in your lungs and the strength in your legs and all the things that make you you, all of your character bits, because we are unique. We are these awesome beings. Nobody has ever been like us. Nobody will ever be us again. It is, it's an amazing position we have to experience life and to just be in a moment where you are at your most awesomest and you're thinking about these things. And I click the camera and that is now immortalized forever. I freaking love my job. <laughs> How did you get started in photography and specifically doing portraits? I knew that it was always gonna be portraits. I like to compare photography with being a doctor because there are so many different avenues you can take, you know? Uh, you can be a general practitioner, sure. There are plenty of photographers who say, I have a camera, so I'm going to take pictures of everything. That is not me. I'm a heart surgeon sometimes. Sometimes I'm a brain surgeon. I definitely have my specialty, and it is faces. It is portraiture. And because of the background that I explained earlier, I knew immediately that portraits and people were the avenue I was going to go down. A lot of people ask me, because I have a camera, they sort of expect me to say, oh yeah, I do weddings and newborns and sure, I'll take your family reunion photos and all these grand events. And actually, I, I, I know it's gonna sound strange, but I'm gonna be honest, I have no love for doing grand events that way because um, again, my thing is authenticity. And a lot of times in those big arenas, people are, there, you, you can't expect everyone to be comfortable. You can't expect everyone to show up as themselves or happy or jolly or whatever. And my specialty is do, 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 laser focusing in on an individual. So I often say I don't do events because you are the event. You, me, and the camera. That is all we need. 
to make this experience spectacular. And the idea about portraits, the reason why I love that is because of the story that only you can tell and you're going to show up. It's impossible for me to have a session and you're not there being your absolute self. If there's any worry or concern or distraction in you, I see it. I, I can't help but see it. And I will turn off my camera and put it down and we'll have a conversation what's going on. And there's a lot of conversation we have before the session so that you know what you're coming into and what to expect. I tell people don't wear shoes when you come into my session because that's another layer, believe it or not, of trying to be something else or elevating yourself to a space where you don't need to be. Instead, let's both take off our shoes and ground ourselves to the earth, to the, to the floor, to, to, to connect even more to each other and, and show up without any expectations for anything else. So the person is the event. That's a very interesting way of viewing it. And I think, you know, that kind of, you know, taking somebody through a, when they first sit down or start talking to you, there's a journey they have to go through before they're, you know, you're ready to actually start taking photographs. And they, there's a certain discovery you have to go through with them. And it's a journey you take together, I'm guessing, to try to peel mm -hmm. back some of the layers that they put on there because they're thinking they have to present themselves a certain way. And you're trying to get, you know, you're trying to figure out like, how do you, you know, how do you get to that event? How do you know when you've arrived? <laughs> oh, that's such a great question. I love that. So most of what I do because I network so much is personal branding headshots. So people come to me when they're looking for updates to their LinkedIn profile or, you know, website branding, marketing for their Instagram, all the places that they're into it, you know, and that's, that's a subcategory of what portraiture is as a whole. So I get a lot of messages, whether it's through email, texting, or the one-on-ones that I have before you come into your session. And it's all the confessions. I, Mika, I, we're, we're, we're going to have to be concerned about my ears and my chin and my weight and this thing, this thing, this thing, and I don't have any clothes that fit properly. And just, you can imagine there's a, a list a mile and a half long about all these things that I should, as the photographer, look out for, be attentive to. And I don't pay attention to that list at all. I, I'm not intimidated by it. I'm not afraid of it. And they actually disappear. I'm going to use that word. They disappear when you walk through the walls of my studio. There is, there's something that happens and some people call it magic. I don't know really what to call it, but there is genuinely something that happens when you stop con having concern for those little tiny superficial external things and start paying attention to who you are and the message that you want to bring across. And because it's, I, I say that my portraiture is connection, whether it's connecting with your clients, you know, that's your LinkedIn headshot, your website profiles, blah, 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 or it's connecting with the person that you bring in. I do mothers and daughters, sisters, best friends, you know, that sort of thing. And then the, the last, but definitely not least kind of connection is the connection with yourself. And a lot of times when I do personal branding in the studio, connection with your clients is definitely important. But first, we talk about and we work on the connection with yourself. Because if you're not true to yourself, guess what's going to happen? doesn't matter what kind of photo we take, your client is not going to connect. They're not going to connect with someone who doesn't feel comfortable in their own skin. That's first and foremost, and so super, super important. Many people like the idea of being famous and like you said, having their pictures taken. Everybody wants that million dollar look and smile and all that. Uh, but most pictures I've seen, and I think a lot of people will agree, are not necessarily very flattering, even though they may have paid a lot of money. How do you make clients comfortable 
so you can bring out the best <laughs> in them and in your work. I don't know if you're asking me to tell like a secret or what. Um, I I don't know. I I can't tell you how. There's no formula that I learned or can share really. It's you know how there's a separation in skill and, and talent, right? There's the things that you're just kind of born with. And then there's the things that you can put in a textbook and hope that someone picks up. And Jeffrey, I I, I don't know what to, to answer, how to answer that. I like people. I, I'm interested in stories and you can't fake that. And you, I, I suppose you can learn how to, but I'm genuinely, I genuinely want you to have a great experience. I'm genuinely heartbroken to hear the stories that people say where, you know, they're, they're 50 and 60 years old and they tell me I've never had a photograph that I liked since I was a teenager. I hate being in front of the camera. I'd rather have a root canal. It, you know, those kind of comments just go on and on and on. And that's, it's genuinely heartbreaking to me because we're important as humans. There are people around us who love us who want documentation of us as we're alive, especially when we're not here. You, 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 there's a quote from someone I adore who says, one day your children are gonna look for photographs of you. What are they gonna find? Are they not gonna find anything because you've been too, you know, too, too embarrassed to be in front of the camera? That, that's insanity to me. And in so many words, some, without saying it, Sometimes the idea is there, hey, get over yourself. It's not about <laughs> it's not about how much you weigh. It's about showing up and owning this thing that we call life and experiencing it in, in the greatest way we can. So conversation and connection, my own connection with people is how I get people to really show up and and just kind of forget about those external superficial things that number one, don't really matter as far as your, who you are and your personality. And number two, I am the professional. So guess what? I've learned how to pose. I've learned how to light. I know certain things that will naturally slim and flatter your angles. When I talk to you for the first time before turning on the camera, I'm watching how you smile, I'm watching how you laugh, I'm watching how you move. And these are things that I innately observe and absorb so that when you come in, I know specifically, individually, how to treat you so that you're walking out with the, I'm gonna say this, Jeff, the best photos you've ever taken. <laughs> That's great. So, we talked about a little bit of the therapeutic effect and you know what these pictures and portraits have provided to people. What happens post-portrait for your clients? Um, how has the experience changed their views of themselves, short-term or long-term, and maybe how other people view them? Mm, I love that question too. So, I've been in business professionally for five and a half years now, and I'm still getting emails and every now and again, I'll see someone in person and they still go back to those photographs and they'll tell me how, yeah, those photos helped me find my husband or Mika, it's been blah, 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 X years and these are still the best photos that I've ever taken. There are people who tell me this, and I love it when they say it around other people, of course, because word of mouth is the best re kind of referral, where they'll say, Mika has taken, I only let Mika take my photos because no one else does close to what she does, that kind of thing. And of course it's flattering and I appreciate it. And, and like I said, words, your words are the best referral, but it, but every time I hear that it's also, it, it's a, it's an affirmation, a confirmation that I am living my best life and doing what I'm supposed to be here. Everybody wants a purpose, like, right? It, we're always trying to search for the thing that we're quote unquote supposed to be doing here in our lives on this planet. And I feel very fortunate that 
I found mine. This is it. I will die with a camera in my hand because this is this is my service. And I'm grateful and happy to be here in this space. And <laughs> the the after effect, the aftermath, the after waves, like you you bringing up, ha- people are genuinely changed after experiencing this kind of photography and and tension to themselves. I hear so much that they've never experienced anything like this before and that everyone should do it. And of course I agree, but it sounds very biased coming from me. So when they say it, it's again, an amazing validation of what this can do for a person as far as changing the way you feel about yourself. And I'm gonna say this because I haven't said it yet and it's super important. You can see that there's my own portrait behind me and it's it's not, a lot of people say, well, why would I wanna put a photo of myself on my wall? That's so vain, it's so narcissistic, blah, 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 blah. Well, here's, here's this, this is a secret that I can tell you because it's not a secret. When you have an amazing photographic experience and you come out of that experience with images of yourself that you know because you have the memory and the proof this is the best i felt in my entire life this is the best that i've looked and it actually had nothing to do it had little to do with my hair and my makeup and my clothing but it it was because of how i felt in that moment that made all of this beauty shine through Do you know what that does to you on a day-to-day basis when you have a visual reminder of that on your wall? We are all in service, no matter what our jobs are. And when you feel great about yourself, and this is the thing that you see before you walk out of the house and do what you do every day, your productivity, your joy, the experience and connection that you have with people on a day-to-day basis over and over again is that much more elevated and grand and secure and delightful because you have a love for yourself that you didn't have before. It is amazing the productivity and joy that we can put out into the world because of how we feel about ourselves. And you know the opposite is true. When we don't feel good about ourselves, we do, you know, we put out not so good things into the world. When we love ourselves and we've got great proof of it, we put out more joy. Ah, that's really, really interesting. So I'm thinking there's an element. Okay, so I had the description before about art as therapist. I think I need to have something about spirituality in there. I'm not quite sure how to weave it in. <laughs> and, and now I like what you just said. You use the word proof, but you can also use proof when you're doing photography. So you've got kind of a play on words around a proof positive. Interesting. I like that. (laughs) I know the last year with COVID has been stressful for everybody. How have you been able to work with clients and, you know, help them with their portraits during, you know, the craziness definitely crazy um i was absolutely in quarantine locked down with everyone else those first few months when we had no idea what this bug was and what, what it was doing and then because i'm in chicago because the mayor said so you know we went through these stages and all of a sudden it was like all right this group of people can go back to work and i was I was actually physically shaking because, I mean, we all had a fear, right? We had no idea what was gonna happen. Um, So, and and I hadn't worked for a solid three months, no contact at all with anybody else except the people that I lived with. So going back to work was a little terrifying. And then I walked through the doors and my first client back during that time had, had pushed her session back because of this COVID and quarantine. So she had still been wanting to come in. So finally, it was in June, she said, is it all right? You know, we were at stage five or whatever, can can we do this? I said, yeah, you know, I'm gonna go back to work and you, let's do this. And she walked in and she had this giant smile on her face 
And it was the smile of relief and happiness to be there and finally doing something that she had been waiting for for so long. And when I saw that in her, it just immediately, I just filled up with, this is why I'm doing this. There's no reason to be afraid. This is, this is, <laughs> it is so my joy, you know? I think the pandemic, so many things came out of it, but a lot of what came out of the pandemic was each of us having an opportunity to hone in on where our happiness is and what works for us and where our joys lie. And it was just affirmed right away that this is the thing in my life that brings me the most, the fullest joy. And I recognized on that day that I actually photograph six feet apart anyway. <laughs> So with my mask on and already being in the habit of photographing at least six feet apart, we had a wonderful time. She had wonderful images that she ordered for gifts for everybody else in her house because they had no pictures of her. And now she finally had photos that she loved and wanted to share. So that was amazing. And actually, believe it or not, 2020 ended up being the best year of business because there were several people who had time to think about their own businesses and, and wanted to level up. So they had time to do it. There were people who wanted to commemorate connections with the people that were in their lives because of all the fear that the pandemic was, you know, obviously perpetuating. So I, there were a few sessions where people came in with loved ones, mothers, sisters, daughters, whatever. And we had an amazing bonding loving connecting time photographing them it was it was a really interesting year to see where people's priorities were and again you know you think about photography and how important it is in your life you know god forbid there's a fire or a tornado what's the thing that you run toward to save it's the family album right the people the documentation of the people that you love and i'm i'm so grateful that i get that I get to do that for people. Yes, I, I, I think it's interesting just to read about and listen to, um, if you will, social scientists, behavioral experts talk about the impact that COVID has had on people and not just COVID, but the increasing isolation because of technology and other changes that are going on um, and I think you talked about something really important about people kind of taking a step back and maybe wanting to re-examine their identities. And I think we're seeing a lot more of that, especially in younger people. Uh, so I think, you know, there's something about that where this, this process of portrait is also uh, an affirmation of identity or maybe a reaffirmation of who they really wanted to be. I like those words a lot. Um, you, you've been hearing a lot of things that I say about my business, the sort of words and phrases that I, I share when I refer to what I do. And another thing that I say often is that spider makeup portraits, the experience of it is an opportunity to heal, create, or discover a part of who you are. Reawaken should probably be in there too. <laughs> well, that goes back to the spirituality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is, um, I had, there was a person one time and I hate that she forgot it as soon as she said it. And I, I wish that I had her direct quote, but after directly after her session, she said, oh my gosh, Mika, this was like yoga, therapy, church, sex, all wrapped in one. <laughs> It was an amazing quote. And yeah, it's her sentiments are echoed by many. <laughs> it's, it's an all in one, it really is. When we spoke before, you shared some ways you were exploring technology and maybe different mediums in, to find ways of advancing some of the work you do and maybe creating some new art forms, uh, maybe new experiences for your clients. I was just wondering if you've done any more you know, exploration of that, and if there's anything that you can maybe talk to. I remember our conversation, and 
as far as any development on it, it's there's definitely been a, a pause because we're sort of revering back up and figuring ourselves out all over again, you know, now that vaccinations are around and this COVID thing, we can't really say that it's under control, but we're at least managing it as best as we can. So there are definitely some things that are um, higher on the list of importance than the conversation that you and I had about how technology can expand my, my business, my photography, uh, what it centers around especially for me is I, I love, even though photographs are still, you know, frozen in time, I love opportunities where I can create movements and the photo feels alive in some way. And with that idea came this idea of moving portraits, something on more of a video level, but very subtle, very slow. Uh, again, kind of going back to me watching the spider, it just grabs your attention and you don't know how long you're sitting there, but you know that you're watching something that's meaningful and really, really connecting for families, especially for yourself and the moment that you're commemorating. You have to be present to really enjoy it. And, and watch the entire loop just sort of play out and ingest it. And I can see it in my head as this being something really wonderful for families, um, for generations, you know. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Well, that kind of brings the conversation 360 at some level. That's the play on words, but it's been great talking to you, Spider. It's been great listening to your stories. Um, if folks want to get in touch with you, how can they best reach you? The best way to find me is very easy. I keep it super simple. I am Spider Mika everywhere, and it's spelled just how it sounds. S-P-I-D-E-R-M-E-K-A, SpiderMika.com, Spider Mika on Instagram. My number is there. My email is there, info at spidermika.com. It's very, very simple to find me. I, my studio is located at 4311 North Ravenswood in Chicago, north side, not downtown, which is, there's free parking, Jeff, so come visit anytime. <laughs> Spider, thank you for your time today. The information and guidance are very helpful. We greatly appreciate your expertise and we think our listeners will find it equally useful. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Ask the Experts. I'm your co-host, Jeffrey Walk. And I'm Elizabeth Finlayson. Don't forget to send us your questions, suggestions, or ideas. As always, you can reach us at askthexperts at gmail.com. Have a productive week.